In a land ruled by gigantic beasts, a single human barely stands a chance. But you don't have to fight alone. Seek out the perfect monster companion to team up with as you take on the behemoths of Ikoria. Rise up, grow stronger together, and claw your way to the top of the food chain. Hello everyone, my name's Elspeth, this is the Planeswalker Pantheon, and today we are going to bring you a booster box opening of the latest set of Magic the Gathering, Ikoria, Lair of the Behemoths. I mean, we can talk about this set all day, but let's get to the stuff that we came here to see, shall we? I've been a little bit nervous about opening this because I've heard, because of the box toppers, that some of them may have gotten a little bit squished. So I may. So let's just hope that ours is a okay. Ah, good news. Our box topper is in great condition. I've seen some real uh, disasters. But, anyways, let's get to this. We'll skip through the commons, read through uncommons if we haven't read them, and then we'll read through the whole rare. Oh, these are the Japanese styles, so we've just gone straight to the rare. So we've got a Scarred Barons and a Ragurin Tyrum. This is the Jeskai Trium. Right there, so that's real neat. I'll know that for next time. Flourishing Fox, Fox, great in standard at the moment in the cycling deck, which I'm so happy to see that that's a thing. Got a Tranquil Cove, and we've got a Death's Oasis. I think I've got a place out of this. So Death's Oasis is a white, black, and a green for an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard. Then return a creature card with lesser converted mana cost than the creature that died from your died from your graveyard to your hand. You can pay one, sacrifice the Oasis. You gain life great, equal to the greatest converted mana cost among creatures you control. A nice little easy prey. I think that's more of a stand a standard format. Removal spell, Zagoth Crystal, Proud Wild Bunder. I love this new Evolving Wilds art, it looks so great. I love this new Fossil art as well. Drown Stinger, also great in the cycling deck. Oh, and we got a migratory great horn in that cool comic book artwork. That's neat. I've been doing pretty well, I think, with my opening of the comic book artwork. I got a Scarab Barons. Oh, and we got a Foil Luna's Brood Moth. Holy crap, this is actually what. Holy wow, that's one of the cards that I was actually looking for for this set. And I got a Foil <laughs> version of it. Oh, so Luminous Broodmoth, for those who haven't seen this crazy card, it's two and two white for a creature insect. It's a 3-4 with flying. Whenever a creature you control without flying dives, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a flying counter. Got a Labyrinth Raptor as well, so this is great for the um, limited menace tribal deck. So for a red and a black, you get a creature nightmare dinosaur. It's a 2-2 with menace. Whenever a creature with menace becomes blocked, defending player sacrifices a creature blocking it. And then for black and a red creatures you control with menace, get plus 1 plus 0 oh until end of turn. Got an escape protocol. Unbreakable bond. And a chittering harvester. And we'll go through these commons. Alright, next. I was not expecting to open that brood moth. That caught me a little off guard. 
<laughs> I was talking to a friend of mine not too long ago and he was like, hey, are you looking for any cards from this set? I'm like, yeah, I'm looking for a brood moth. Look at this, these are the companion tokens, like, you know, for like, if you want to use somewhere to mark clearly where a companion would go. That's pretty neat, actually. I got a Bloodfell Caves. And we've got an Obosh, the Prey Piercer. So for three and two Rectos Hybrid, you get a legendary creature, Helion Horror. It's a 3-5. If a source you control with an odd, with an odd converted mana cost would deal damage to a permanent or a player, uh, it deals double that, double that damage to a permanent or player instead. It's a 3-5, so it effectively attacks for 6. And for it to be your companion, you might just have your deck... Uh, entirely filled with odd converted mana cost cards. Monstrous Sep, a Savory Crystal, a Leg Regal Leosaur, and we've got some commons here. I'll quickly scan through them. Alright, next. I love that they've decided to go with the Japanese way of printing the packs. That way you've got this little neat little uh, pull tab. That makes this so much easier. Got some more tokens. A basic planes. Got a foil jubilant sky bonder here. So for one and two Azorius hybrid, you get a creature human wizard. It's great for the flying tribal deck. Uh, it's a two two creatures you control with flying have spells your opponents cast that target this creature cost two more to cast. And we got Dranith Magistrate recently banned in Brawl and Maybe normal commander. I mean, I guess they still allow Nevermore to exist, and this is a creature, so it's a lot easier to remove. But Dranith Magistrate is one and a white for a creature human wizard. It's a 1-3. Your opponents can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Got a Bastion of Remembrance, a General's Enforcer, which is great, and a Pouncing Shore Shark. We'll see. All these. Got a dinosaur beast token there. That's the one that comes from the Quartz Smasher. Got an island. And we got a Savory Triome. So this is the Mardu version of the Triomes. So it can add, it ends as a battlefield tap, comes in, you can, pay, you can cycle for three, and it can add a red, white, or black to your mana pool. On the seas, I've actually done some gross things with on the season draft. When I've played on Magic Online, Zenith Flare, also a key part for the cycling deck, actually as is Reptilian Reflection. And we'll quickly go through the rest of these. Got a Dismal Backwater. And we got the Eerie Ultimatum, so this is the Abzan Ultimatum. So for two white, three black, and two green, you get a sorcery. Return any number of permanent cards with different names from your graveyard to the battlefield. In other words, Busted and Commander, you literally just reanimate your whole graveyard, aside from basic lands. Got a Barrier Breach, Mystic Subduel, Primal Empathy, which is actually pretty cool in the sort of, if you're playing like a Karuda deck. Adventurous Impulse, that's nice to see a reprint. Got a Farfinder. I love this artwork on the Farfinder. I kind of want to open a foil. And there's the original Great Horn if you have not seen that art already. Got a Human Soldier. Island. A foil Frostvale Ambush. Which looks pretty neat. And we've got the Indartha Triome, so the Abzan Triome, but this time in that cool comic book style artwork. So this is the Abzan Triome. I won't go into it too much. Call of the Death Dweller, Polywog Symbiote, Porky Parrot, which is probably one of my favourite names in this set. Uh, Evolving Wilds, Ramp Through, Glimmerbell's Great, Plume, Prickly Mama set, Dream Tower Heron's probably one of the best blue commons in this set. If we're talking draft. Uh, 
another little companion marker. Got a Highlands, and we got the Ketra Triome. I think we've opened three or all, f all five of the Triomes, which is pretty neat. This is the Teema Triome here. Titan North Rex, Reconnaissance Mission, Clash of Titans, which I've kind of been a little bit disappointed about. Like, if you can get it off and it, you just two for one your opponent, it's great, but I've never, I haven't been that impressed by it. We got ourselves a little cat bird. Got a Windscard Crag. And Emergent Ultimations. This is the Soul Tide Ultimatum. So for two black, three green, and two blue, you get a sorcery. Search your library for up to three monocolored cards with different names and exile them. An opponent chooses one of those cards. Shuffle that card into your library. You may cast the other cards without paying their mana cost. Exile the ultimatum. The reason why they put that exile in there is because it'll be broken if you could do it more than once. That's great. Got a Bastion, Splendor Bear, oh, and a Glowstone Recruits in that comic book art. Got Sudden Spinnerets. Let's see what else we've got in here, if there's worth things worth talking about. Serrated Scorpion is great in um, the, uh, the Obosh decks at the moment. Fire Prophecy, great removal in draft. And we've got a Dreamtail Heron in that cool artwork as well. I love this style of artwork that this is a comic book style artwork they decide to imprint. Probably more so than some of the Godzilla artwork, but that's, that's just personal preference. I'm not going to tell you what you can and can't like. Human Soldier. And we've got an Oozolith. So for one mana, you get a legendary artifact. Whenever a creature you control leaves the battlefield, if it had counters on it, put those counters on the Oozolith. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if the Oozolith has counters on it, you may move all counters from the Oozolith onto a target creature. So for Commander, this is great for Skullbriar, any of the um, Abzan-based counters decks um, in Limited and maybe even in other formats. You know, it's great for um, like Affinity like in the Hardened Scales version. There's a few ways we can apl apply it. Will of the All Hunter, Sprite Dragon, Legal, Le Regal Leosaur. It's a brushwag, the mighty brushwag. I can kind of imagine Ikoria having some sort of sports team with the brushwag as their sort of mascot. I love this new passive mark. It looks so cute. Some more counters. I actually hate these ones. I like the ones in the bundles and the pre-release kits a little bit more. A Tranquil Cove. Got a Majestic Oricorn. So this is a four and a white. Oh, actually, in the foil and in that comic book artwork. Let's see if I can get it to shine nice. Uh, so it's a creature unicorn. It's a four-four with uh, vigilance. Whenever this creature mutates, you gain four life, and you can mutate it for four. And we got the Genesis Ultimatum. So this is the Teema Ultimatum. So for two green, three blue, and two red, you get a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. Put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into your hand. Exile the Ultimatum. Void Beckoner, Pouncing Shore Shark, Blitz of the Thunder Raptor. All right, our commons here. Another human soldier. Some planes. We've got a foil savory triome. Again, I think we've opened nearly all the triomes, but this is the Marty triome that we opened earlier, but in a nice, neat foil. And our rare, which is actually a mythic, is Fiend Artisan. So for two Golgari hybrid, you get a creature nightmare. It's a 1 1. Fiend Artisan gets plus 1 plus 1 for each creature card in your graveyard, and for X and a Golgari hybrid and tap it. Sacrifice another creature. Search your library for a creature card with converted mana cost X or less. Put it onto the battlefield and then shuffle your library. Activate this ability at only any time you can cast a full streak. So it does a little bit of a, um, a Tarmogoyf impression. Does a little bit of a Vanifar impression as well. 
which is real neat. So we've got the Wingspan Mentor, Weaponize the Monsters, Sonorous Howbonder as our uncommons. Blood Curdle's Great Removal in Limited. Always pick them up if you're in black. Human Soldier Token. Got a Foil Legal Regal Leosaur, which looks real neat. So a uh, Regal Leosaur is red and white for a 2-2 two -two dinosaur cat. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, other creatures you control get plus two, plus one until end of turn. And you can mutate it for one and two Boros Hybrid. And our next rare is actually a mythic. It's General Kudro of Dranath. So for one, a white and a black, you get a legendary creature, human soldier. Other humans you control get plus one, plus one. So it's a lord, which is neat. We always want love more human lords. Whenever General Kudro of Dranath or another human enters the battlefield under your control, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. So it's great to hate on some of the graveyard things that are in standard at the moment. And for two mana, you can sacrifice two humans to destroy a target creature with power four or greater. Some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. It's the wolf bear. Valiant Rescuer, also great in that uh, standard cycling deck. Osprey Starix and some commons. And we've got a Vulpicate in that cool comic book artwork. That looks neat. This box has been pretty good. Good. I Cat boob. Got a jungle hollow. And we've got an Umori the Collector. So for two and two Golgari hybrid, you get a legendary creature ooze. It's a four five. Uh, as Umori the Collector enters the battlefield, choose a card type. Spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. Each normal and for it to be your companion, your, your starting deck, um, each card in your online card in your starting deck must share a creature type. So, sorry, share a card type. Got an Ivy Elemental. Dustfang Mentor, and a Skybonder. Nice new Essence Scatter art, which I think was due for a brand new art treatment for a long time. And our rare is a Cub Warden. So for three and a white, you get a creature cat. It's a three five with lifelink. Whenever this creature mutates, create two one one uh, cat creature tokens with lifelink and you can mutate it for two and two white. I wonder now if there's enough stuff in modern, enough cats in modern to make sure you make a decent uh, cat deck. I've seen some lists go around thanks to this set. So we've got a boon of the wish giver, a storm wild caprador. In other words, some you can never kill with non-combat damage. And Sprite Dragon. And Ling Rock Slide's Great Red Removal. Alright, let's see what else we got. Human Soldier. Bloodfell Caves. And we've got a Cub Warden in the... Uh, uh, comic book artwork. I'm not going to read the card out, but I'm just going to show that really cool looking artwork. It's cool you can actually see the little cats in the background in this one. We've got Charge with Forever Beast, Primal Empathy, Flame Spill, which, which is um, Super Duper Death Ray from the, um, the Unsets. They actually managed to make it work in a Black Border set, which is really neat. I love it when they man find ways to do it. I couldn't put actual trample in there because trample has some we had some weird sort of rules text that sort of mucked around with how spells work, I think, and that's why they couldn't put the actual keyword on there. But the fact that they um, found a way to still capture the spirit, I guess, um, was really neat. Got a human soldier, our forest. And we've got the Mythos of Snapdax. I've been wanting to build a Queen of My Chaser deck and I've been looking for one of these. So for two and two white, you get a sorcery. Each creature chooses an artifact, a creature, enchantment, a planeswalker, and a planeswalker from among non-land permits they control. 
if they then uh, sacrifice the rest, if black and red was spent to cast a spell, you choose per use permanence for each player instead. Sanctuary Lockdown. Footfall Creator Die Tactics is a great removal spell. Mutual Destruction is also great. Same with Excavation Mole. That was actually a pretty solid pack, but I mean, I'd slam that Mythos. Even if I can't get like the best out of it, it's still just good. Got a little beastie for trumpeting now. Got a swamp. Got a foil hampering snare, which looks really cool. Let me see if I can get that foil. And our rare is the Frontland Felidar. So for two, a green and a white, you get a creature, a cat beast. It's a 3-5 with Vigilance. Creatures you control with Vigilance have one and tap, tap target creature. So the cool thing is you can swing out, make sure it's, you know, a decent attack for you, of course. Swing out, have them come back, and then be able to just tap things down on your opponent's turn. So it's, I've actually been taken over by this pretty hard. Swallow Hole is great removal. Savory Thundermane is great for the cycling deck. You're playing that in limited. Skull Prophet is just cool. I think it's been seeing a little bit of play in standard. I think for some graveyard decks. I don't know. I mean, with all the companions running around, it's kind of hard to find what things are actually good at the moment. Because there, I think there are a lot of really neat things in this set. The cat. Got a cliffs. Got a foil go for blood. And our rare is a lover bring venturer. So for two and a white, you get a creature, human soldier. It's a 3-3. Three, three. When it enters the battlefield, choose odd or even. I believe it was choose even from memory. Um, but uh, when it has protection from each converted mana cost of the chosen value, which is really cool. Got a Migration Path, the best new Rampant Growth, Necro Panther, Zenith Flare, and some Commons. Got a Feather Token for the Everquill Phoenix there. Got a Mountain, a Foil Leaf Vul Keep. And our rare is Gigantha the Wellspring. So for four and a single uh, Gruul hybrid, you get a legendary creature, Elemental Elk. It's a 5-5. Five five. You can tap to add the full Wooberg, but it can't be used to spend... It can't be used to pay generic mana costs. And for it to be your companion, no card in your starting deck has more than one of the same mana symbol in its mana cost. So you can't have double blacks, double greens, double blues, double of any of the hybrid mana. It has to be one of each type only. And I think this is the easiest one to make work in draft, From if I'm remembering correctly. I've seen a lot of people gigant uh, making Gigant for their companion. Sanctuary Smasher, Migration Path, and a Necro Panther are our uncommons. Fire Prophecy, I've seen this in foil. It looks neat as hell. Heck in foil. Got some more little tokens. Got ourselves a forest. And we've got a Lutri the Spell Chase for the cutest little elemental order that got immediately banned in Commander. So for one and two, uh, is it hybrid? You get a legendary creature, elemental order. It's it has companion, it's a three, two with it's a three-two with flash. When Lutri the Spell Chaser enters the battlefield, if you cast a copy target instant or sorcery you control, you may choose new targets for the copy. Oh, the cutest little boy to get, just immediately banned. He never had a chance. But I can see why in both Brawl and Regular Commander that he got banned. It's just a free card for any deck that's running at least blue-red. It's just a free card, and that's too big of an advantage, I think, for um for any one player to get. So anything from is it all the way up to five color... As long as you're running blue red, it's something you kind of have to run. And because of the companion of each and all land card in your side deck must have a different name, you're basically playing commander. You've got that rule already. You've got a human soldier, a thorn wolf falls, and a shark typhoon. So the shark nato is here, guys. So for five and a blue, you get an enchantment. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you create an XX blue shark creature token with flying. Where X is that cell's converted mana cost. 
And you can also cycle for X or one to blue. When you cycle Shark Typhoon, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying. When I played against I played against someone on draft on Magic Magic Arena, I actually got them to cycle this without even getting the shark. That's how far behind they were. And Dartha Crystal Reconnaissance Mission, which is great if you need to care about things not being blocked. As you know, when you like one of um Crystal Piracy and things like that. And Alert Heat Bonder, which is great for the um uh, green and white uh, vigilance decks. This Whisper Squad's great. Blade Banish is good removal. Same with Capture Sphere. Yeah, I think they had to beef up the removal in this set just because of how good, how big creatures can get. Between Blood Curdle, like sometimes even Pacifism and something like Mystic Subdual are just not enough because they can just get so much bigger. And nothing's stopping you from mutating onto things that have already sort of been locked down. A human soldier, a swift water, and we've got a Zerd of the Dawn Waker recently banned in Legacy. So for one and two Boros hybrid, you get a 3 3 legendary creature, Elemental Fox. It has, or is it vintage? I can't remember. It's one of those older formats. Uh, for it to be your companion, each permanent card in your starting deck has an activated ability. I've actually seen people try this in standard because cycling, ladies and gentlemen, is a activated ability. Abilities you activate that aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. This effect can't reduce the mana in that cost to less than one. And you pay one and tap it to make a creature can't block, and it's a 3 3. Got a Momentum Rumbler. He just keeps rumbling along. Got a Heartless Act. Good little remover in limited. Sorry, more in standard formats. General's Enforcer, which is great. And we got some commons here. And we'll see what else we got. ourselves a little human soldier got a rugged highlands and we've got the song of creation so for one green blue and a red you get an enchantment you may pay an additional land on each of your turns whenever you cast a spell you draw two cards at the beginning of your end set discard your hand this it feels broke it feels busted but i haven't seen anyone actually break it just yet neutralize so who loves a cancel with cycling everyone some easy prey and an insatiable hemophage. Got some commons. And we've got another great horn with that comic book artwork. I love those, I love, I love the artwork. It's just cool. Like, yeah, they don't look like magic cards, but you know, that's what you're meant to do. Like with sets like this sometimes, especially when you've got like alternate art treatments. Make them not look like magic cards. Got a dismal backwater and we've got an offspring's re revenge. So for two, a red, white, and a black, you get an enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, exile a red, white, or black creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's a 1 1. It gains haste until your next turn. So this is great if you have like uh, ATB effects um, that can take advantage of the fact that it's only a 1 1 rather than a 4 4, or rather than its normal power and toughness. Got a rooting moloch, a frill scare mentor. A Grim Dancer and some commons. Fertilid is great for this set. It's been a long time since we've last seen a Fertilid. Next one. Got a human soldier. Some planes. And we've got a Yadaro, the Wandering Monster. So for five and two red, you get a legendary creature dinosaur turtle. As Tramplin Haze, but you can cycle them away for a one and a red. Whenever you cycle uh, Yadaro, the Wandering Monster, shuffle it into your library from your graveyard. If you've cycled a card named Yadaro, Wandering Monster, four or more times this game, put it onto the battlefield from your graveyard instead. So it'll just come down, you'll cycle them away. Got a Stormwild Caprador, Hornbash Mentor, and Majestic Oricon in that cool comic book artwork. Yeah, you just cycle him away, he'll go away for a while, then he'll come back, and then he'll go away, and then eventually he'll decide to stick around and just crack in for an 8. Where your opponents least expect it. I like this artwork, not as much as the original, but it's still a nice piece of art. And it has like a nice little storytelling between this forbidden friendship and a capture sphere. Got a soldier, got a mountain, 
I've got the Mythos of Broco. So for two and two green, you get a sorcery. If blue, black was spent to cast a spell, search your library for a card, put that card into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. And then you can return to... Or otherwise, you can just return two permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. I'm fine with casting this for its normal cost. I don't need to necessarily tutor it out. I'm sorry, tutor it out. So Will the All Hunter. I've got a Sanctuary Smasher and a Majestic Oracorn. Whisper Squad. Gorak is great um, to mutate onto because it already has a keyword. Arrow is great. Remove Good removal. Well, the key is great. Same with Prickly Marmoset. Now, unless that foil luminous brood moth cancels our foil rare for the box, we still have not opened one yet. <laughs> All right, so I've got a soldier, got a mountain, got a foily swamp, and our rare is the sky cat sorbent. So, if you're familiar with the card Pride of the Clouds, this is what it's ref that's what it's referencing. So, for a white and a blue, the creature elemental cat, it's a one one with flying. It gets plus one plus one for each other creature ca creature you control with flying, and for two and a white and a blue, you get, a cr you get to create a one one cat bird with flying. Leave the sampe. This is a good thing to see. Get a good reprint. The Zagoth Mumba's great. I'm gonna hunt Master Liger in that comic book artwork as well. And we've got a Cloud Piercer in that artwork as well. That's another two for one pack in that one. Got a Jungle Hollow here. And we've got a Vivian the Monster's Advocate. So this is one of three Planeswalkers in the set. Whoops. Uh, so for three and two green, you get a legendary Planeswalker Vivian. She starts at three loyalty. She has a couple of static abilities. You may look at the top card of your library at any time. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. This includes Mutate, guys. And you can plus one to create a three three green beast creature token. Put your choice of a Vigilance counter, a Rage counter, or a Trample counter on it. And you can minus two whenever you cast your next creature spell this turn. Search your library for a creature card with lesser converted mana cost. Put it onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. Neat. <clears throat> Ketra Crystal Fighters 1 is a good combat trick, and Back was a really good anim reanimation spell. Um, in one of my pre-releases, I actually did build a green-black deck. This is from the set that you didn't see, the pre-release kit you didn't see, because I had three purchased. Um, in that one, uh, I had Imori. I was, I was pretty close, I think, to having him as a companion. But I just had two back for mores and just some really good removal and I just didn't want to jeopardize that. Got a dinosaur, a blossoming sands, and we got the dirge bat. Uh, so for two and two black, it's a creature bat. It's a three three flash and flying. You can mutate it for four and two black. And whenever this creature mutates, destroy a target creature or planes, walk on opponent controls. Hindsight mentor, neutralizer, and parcel beast is great. Wilt. Convolute's a nice little reprint. Got a beastie. Got a planes. Got a full migration path. Someone in Commander would probably want that. And we got the Mythos of Vadrock. So for two and two red, you get a sorcery. It deals five damage divided and Divided as you choose among any number target number of target creatures and or planeswalkers. If white blue was spent to cast a spell until your next turn, those permits can't attack or block and the activities can't be activated. So you can go, okay, five damage. One, two, three, four of your creatures, your planeswalker. I've played white white blue. You can't activate their abilities. Got a Zagoth Crystal, Boneyard Lurker in that comic book art. It kinda looks a little Cthulhu. Yeah, it's a little bit Lovecraftian. That looks really neat. A wild bonder and some commons. So I love the thieving order. I had the, the pleasure of in a draft on arena putting a uh, one of the uh, the sea dasher octopus onto it. Draw two cards. I get a divination basically every turn I hit with it. It felt nice. It feels real nice.
Swamp, we've got Allurus of the Dream Den, recently banned in multiple formats, main Legacy and Vintage. So for one and two Azor sorry, two Orzov hybrid, you get a 3-2 legendary creature cat nightmare with lifelink. During each of your turns, you may cast one permanent spell with converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard. And for it to be your companion, each con permanent in your starting deck has converted mana cost two or less. I tried to get to make a Soul Sisters deck out of Lurus, but you lose a lot of pretty key cards. You lose access to all of your uh, Captains of Eos, both your Ranger and the Ranger Captain. Oh, and we've got Cavern Whisperer in that comic book art. You lose Archangel Thrun. Uh, the one that's not like the worst loss is uh, is a Force of Virtue because you can replace that pretty easily with um, I can't remember the name of the two mana one, but there is a um, a cheaper alternative to that card, but it's not the same. got a hunted nightmare so for one and two blacky the creature nightmare it's a four or five with menace when it enters the battlefield target opponent puts a death touch counter on a creature they on their control if your opponent has no creatures there is no downside you've got a four or five with menace congratulations you've got ragaran crystal titan or threx trumping nah and some commons something tells me that foil brew moth did count as my foil rare for the box but i am a-okay -okay with that because we are at the second last pack right now. Human Soldier. I've got a Bonders Enclave, so it's a land. You can tap to add colors, pay three and tap to draw a card. Activate this ability only if you control a creature with power four or greater. Got a Fighter's One, Tutoring Harvester, Cunning Knight Bonder, and as our uncommons, I nearly misread that. This is our last pack before we get to our little box topper. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this and going on this little journey with me. I sure enjoy doing this for you guys. Good Island, Foil Blossoming Sands. And our last rare is an Extinction Event. So for three and a black, you get a Sorcery. Choose Otter Even. Exile each creature with converted mana cost of the chosen value. Key thing, when you're looking at with creatures with mutate, you take the card that's on the top. Um, the topmost card of that mutate stack. Wingspan Mentor, Alcapelago, and a Lord Dracus in that cool artwork. Alright, that's the last pack of the normal packs at least. Now to get to the thing we've all been waiting for. A little... Icoria box topper. I can just fill the card in there. Let's see what we got. Okay, good. I opened it upside down so I don't uh, spoil the surprise for myself. Alright, and the card is for our box topper is a foil guy again. So it's the Garuda Doom of Depths, but in the um uh, the Godzilla artwork. So for those who aren't familiar with Garuda, 4 and 2 Demir Hybrid, you get a legendary creature Demon Kraken. That's a 6-6. Six, six. Uh, when Garuda enters the battlefield, each player puts the top 4 cards of their library into their graveyard. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under, the, under your control. I'll put that just right there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please... Share this video around, show it to your friends. Please like, share, favorite, subscribe. Do everything you can to show that this channel exists and that we are producing content. You can find more this video and a lot more content on the Planeswalker Pantheon, uh, the Facebook group. The link will be down below. You can follow me on Twitter. My links will be down below as well. Anyways, guys, I will see you next time.